If you only knew the yearning to get into the mountains that fills me these days. Music is wonderful, but the musical world is bunk. So much petty doings, so much pose and insincerity and distorted values. I find myself looking back on the golden days in Yosemite with supreme envy. I think I came closer to really living then than at any other time of my life because I was closer to elemental things. I love you immensely at this moment and will be so glad to see you again. I am coming to Yosemite sometime in the spring or bust. Ansel. It was a turning point. For the first time, he later said, he had found a way to make a mountain look how it feels, a huge monumental thing. Two weeks later, he wrote Virginia. My photographs have now reached the stage when they are worthy of the world's attention. Six months later, in the spring of 1931, he awoke one morning with another dazzling vision. Photography, he declared, is really perception, the analytic interpretation of things as they are. The medium's true power, he now saw, came not by evading reality, but by embracing it. It was like the Annunciation, he later said. Suddenly I saw what photography could be, a tremendously potent pure art form, an austere and blazing poetry of the real. Abandoning pictorialism once and for all, along with anything else that diminished the brilliance and clarity of his subject matter, he dedicated himself to the principles of pure photography, striving for the greatest clarity of vision and the greatest tonal range, and rejecting textured papers for what he called the simple dignity of the glossy print. He set himself problems of extreme depth of focus and of extreme rendition of textures, and almost fell into the ground glass with excitement. An old board fence behind a patch of thistles could in sunlight become a brilliant clash of dissonant textures. A rose on driftwood, indoors on a dark day, could glow softly. The moods of light could be voiced, textures used like different instruments. Now clouds could float, waterfalls flash, snow hold its hidden light. Grasses bend in infinite delicacy, under dew. Nancy Newhall. Gradually, he said, my photographs began to mean something in themselves. They became records of experiences, as well as of places. It seems to me, his best friend Cedric Wright wrote in the summer of 1932, that your prints have improved like hell in the last year. This is the first time they have seemed on a par with your best writing. Six months later, in the winter of 1933, he traveled east to New York for the first time in his life to meet the great photographer Alfred Stieglitz. In the stillness of his gallery on Madison Avenue, the uncompromising old master silently perused the portfolio of prints Adams had brought with him. Not once, but twice, without uttering a word. Then carefully closed and retied it with a bow. These, he said simply, are some of the finest photographs I have ever seen. Those pictures looked unlike other pictures. If you wanted to try to define the content of it, I think you'd have to say it has to do with his appreciation of the landscape as something that's not permanent, but evanescent always, always in the process of becoming something else. Ansel's landscapes more is surely more than uh, any of the great 19th century photographers who worked over much of the same territory are much less about sculpture. They're less about geology. They're less about permanence. You know, they're less about the solidity of the rocks than about the ephemeral nature of the rocks, that they're always something 
defined by the transient quality of the light, by the weather. He wanted people to understand the deeper time of creation, the, the great forces of nature and of creation that go on despite the permutations of today. And he thought that this was the fundamental message that people needed to understand, that the world exists within this larger world. There is a deeper thing to express. The return of humanity to some sort of balanced awareness of the natural things. Some rocks and sky. We need a little earth to stand on and feel run through our fingers. Perhaps photography can do this. I am going to try anyhow. Ansel Adams. In Ansel's best photographs, you have the sense you could identify the temperature, the relative humidity, the hour of the day, the day of the month, because that's what they're about. He's not doing this for nothing. He's not doing this to show off. That's the nature of his subject matter. It requires that he be able to describe the quality of the air. There's something in Ansel's work that is almost gothic. It's this tracery. It's this uh, shimmering tracery. It's not really substantial. It's like a movie screen. Mm -hmm. Flickers like that. It's all this surface ornament. Very vital and animistic and never still. Shimmering, shaking. In late December, he wrote Alfred Stieglitz, quoting lines from the poet Robinson Jeffers. Does it matter whether you hate yourself? At least love your eyes that can see, your mind that can hear the music, the thunder of the wings. On June 10th, 1937, in a letter to his best friend, Cedric Wright, he struggled to put into words what he had come to understand about the things that mattered most. Dear Cedric, a strange thing happened to me today. I saw a big thundercloud move down over Half Dome. And it was so big and clear and brilliant that it made me see many things that were drifting around inside of me. Things that relate to those who are loved and those who are real friends. For the first time, I know what love is what friends are, and what art should be. Love is a seeking for a way of life, the way that cannot be followed alone, the resonance of all spiritual and physical things. Friendship is another form of love, more passive perhaps, but full of the transmitting and acceptances of things, like thunderclouds and grass and the clean granite of reality. Art is both love and friendship and understanding, the desire to give. It is not charity, which is the giving of things. It is more than kindness, which is the giving of self. It is both the taking and giving of beauty, the turning out to the light of the inner folds the awareness of the spirit. It is a recreation on another plane of the realities of the world, the tragic and wonderful realities of earth and men and of all the interrelations of these. Ansel. <laughs>